Hello, welcome back to this video series of reinforcement learning with TF agents. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. In our last episode, we walked you through an end-to-end -end tutorial of using TF agents and TF Lite to build a board game app using reinforced agents. In this episode, we're going to try out a new type of environment and a new set of APIs to train your agents. Let's first talk a little bit about the new agent, SAC agent, that we're going to use. SAC stands for Soft Actor Critique, and it is a bridge between the value-based methods and the policy-based methods. Let's break SAC down a little bit. In the actor critic part, the policy is referred to as the actor that proposes a set of possible actions given a state. And the estimated value function is referred to as a critic, which evaluates actions taken by the actor based on the given policy. We won't go into the math here, but if you want to learn how to implement the actor critic method from scratch with TensorFlow Core API, you can check out this link. This tutorial is pretty detailed with the implementation. Taking the actor critic method one step further, the key idea behind the SAC is entropy regularization highlighted in the equation. In information theory, entropy measures the randomness of a random variable. The entropy is higher when the random variable is more unpredictable. The reason we want to have the entropy item in the objective function to optimize for in addition to the reward is to encourage more exploration with new actions. So that's the intuition behind SSC. If you want to learn more about the theory behind SSC, please check out the paper and the DeepMind course. Previously, we have used the classical card pool environment and a custom environment. They share one thing in common. The actions in both environments are discrete. In card pool, the actions are zero or one. In the simple board game environment, the actions are cell positions encoded as integers between 0 to 64. In this case, we call them discrete control problem. In this video, we're going to use a new environment called Minitau. The goal is to teach the Minitau a four-leg robot to walk. This task is also known as locomotion. The actions are eight float values for the motor angles we can control. Since these angles are continuous numbers, Minitau is a continuous control problem. TF agents have a number of built-in agents available, but you should take note that different agents support different problem types. For example, DQN and Reinforce don't support continuous control, and SAC doesn't support discrete control. Make sure you choose the right agent for your own task. In our previous episodes, we were using the driver to collect the experience and then train the agent. This time, we're going to use a new actor learner API. The reason we want to use this new API is to support distributed training, which we will get into at the end. Now let's start by importing the Minitau environment. Minitau is a PyBullet environment, so let's import it first. We can see the environment's observation and action specs. As we can see, the observation is fairly complex. We receive 28 values representing the angles, velocities, and torques for all the motors. In return, the environment expects eight values for the actions between negative one and one. These are the motor angles. We're going to use GPU here, so we set use GPU flag to true. The SAC agent needs a critic network to predict values and an actor network to predict actions based on the predicted value. Let's create the critic network first. To do that, we create a helper function. The critic network will have an observation network branch and an action network branch. We will merge them and stack a join network at the top before we output the prediction. Finally, we return the sequential model instance. Similarly, we define a helper function to create an actor network, which predicts actions sampled from a tennis squashed 
multivariate normal Dieck distribution. Don't worry about the fancy distribution name here. You can always look it up in our dis documentation. Next, we instantiate the SAC agent using the actor and the critic network, plus a number of other parameters. We're still going to use the reverb replay buffer here, but we're going to use the rate limiter to enforce conditions on when items can be inserted or sampled from a table. Here, we are using a sample to insert ratio, which sets the average ratio of inserts to samples by blocking insert and sample requests. This is useful for controlling the number of times each item is sampled before being removed. It's a hyperparameter you should tune for better performance. We create the reverb table and the reverb server as before. Then we define the replay buffer. Next, define a function that extracts the training data sets from the replay buffer. We will pass this function to the learner so that the learner can sample training data from the replay buffer. We then create a replay buffer observer. Now we can instantiate an actor with the collect environment and the collect policy to gather experience. We should also create an evaluation actor to evaluate the policy during training. I'm skipping that part here. The learner performs gradient step updates to the policy variables using experience data from the replay buffer. During the training, the learner can push a new set of variable values to the variable container. Now we can run the training loop by first using the actors to collect experience and then using the learner to train the model. After training, we will get a trained Minitau agent that works smoothly. The example we have just walked you through is for non-distributed training. If you recall, when you use TensorFlow to train models, one of the things that can help you accelerate the training is to use hardware accelerators such as GPU or TPU. On top of that, you could use multiple accelerators to make things run even faster. This is called distributed training. Now you have these powerful accelerators running. You need to keep them busy by feeding them a large amount of training data. This is why we need the new Actor Learner API. We will have many instances of actors interacting with the environment and collecting the training data in a parallel fashion. The training trajectories will still be stored in a replay buffer, and our learner will be sampling these trajectories and feed them to the accelerators for faster training. Under the hood, the learner leverages the distribution strategy API in TensorFlow and uses data parallelism to speed things up. The API interface is the same for any accelerator across all agents and is made easy to use. We won't walk through the distributed training code here, but now you understand how it works, feel free to check out our distributed training example in this link. So to summarize today, we discussed the continuous and discrete control, and then we walked you through a SAC example using the Actor Learner API. We also touched upon distributed training so that it can run your training much faster. In our next episode, we're going to talk about the bandits. See you next time. <laughs>